Hey there. Uh, on that old implied volatility video I did years and years ago at this point, uh, I just got a question recently on how to do the same type of calculation for historical volatility. Well, actually, it's not the same type of calculation. It's The question was how to calculate historical volatility uh, using Excel. And that's pretty straightforward. It's basically just the standard deviation of returns. So I'm going to show how to do a simple calculation uh, of that uh, using Python, both Pandas and NumPy, as well as Excel. And I just want to mention basically a subtle difference in the way uh, Pandas and NumPy calculate standard deviations and how you can um, make sure you're getting the number you think you're getting. Or maybe better said, make them agree with each other. So uh, let's do the uh, Python part first and then we'll do Excel at the end. So let's just jump into a notebook. So all we're going to need at first here is Py, uh, NumPy and Panda. So let's do the import. And I'm just going to use some old spy data I have lying around from Yahoo Finance. So I'm just going to pull that into a Pandas data frame. So here's our data frame. Let's just kind of look and see what it looks like here. So we have a bunch of columns, date, uh, open, high, low, close, adjusted close, and volume. So we need the daily returns. So I'm just going to use the adjusted uh, close column and calculate that. Now you can do it manually, or you could do it uh, with a built-in built in pandas function called percent change, PCT underscore change. So I'm going to create a new column here. Let's just call it um, PCT for percent and that's going to be equal to uh, SPY adjusted Y is my, there it goes, ADJ close. Now we're going to call the uh, percent change function, so that's uh, PCT change. And let's just kind of print out that frame again to make sure we're doing it correctly. And the problems begin already. And I see um, we have an extra quotation mark. So here's our column. And obviously the first, uh, the first entry here is not a number because there's no percent change on the first day. So other than that, we look pretty good. Now, I think pandas can handle this not a number, but uh, NumPy cannot. So what I'm going to do is break this column into its own data frame here. So... Um, I don't know, I'm going to call it SPY underscore PCT, and that's going to be equal to uh, SPY uh, PCT, and we're going to take uh, the indices, the indices from one um, to the end, and let's just print this out here, so SPY PCT. So we're good to go here. Let's just make this make sure this is correct. So this number in that other data frame should be uh, 0031. Where are we? 0031. That's good. So, okay. Now, historical volatility, as I said, is the standard deviation of returns over a time period. That time period is typically taken to be a uh, calendar month or 20 calendar days. So I'm just going to take like the first 20 points here and calculate the standard deviation. Now again, Pandas has this built in. Um, I'll just do it for the for the sake of it. Um, SPY PCT dot STD and um, STD. And this is, I want the first 20 points. So I want zero to 20. And remember the way uh, Python does indexing, that 20 uh, is not included, so it's 0 to 19. So uh, that's the answer. The issue is that's only the first point. So Pandas also has, which is very convenient, uh, a, a rolling function where you can calculate these uh, rolling averages, rolling standard deviations. So you don't have to write a loop yourself to do it. Uh, you could just do it built in. So let's get rid of this, and we're going to call the function rolling and it takes as an argument the number of points that kind of make up your rolling window, so we want 20, and then we just call the standard deviation uh, function on that. And if you wanted the mean, for example, you could uh, do a rolling, rolling average. So there we go. And obviously the first bunch of these are uh, not a number, uh, because we need, a, um, uh, we need the first 20 points to actually do the calculation, so the first 20 points are uh, not a number. So let's call this, um, let's call this, Val 
pandas. And we'll just print that out. Uh, print val pandas. So there we go. I wonder if we can call the um, drop and a function. Drop not a number on this. I guess we can, yeah. And um, let us just make a note. Um, I want to insert a row here. And I'm just going to make a note that this is for pandas. And let's come down here and do the same thing for NumPy. Now this is going to, there's going to be a bit of a discrepancy here between uh, NumPy and pandas. So um, let's grab my percent change data. So I called this spy PCT. Um, let's just call it, um, we'll use lowercase uh, letters for um, NumPy arrays instead of the capital letters. So we're just going to take that SPY PCT um, data frame and compute, uh, change it to NumPy. So to NumPy. And let's just print it out to make sure we're doing it correctly. PCT. Cool. So now uh, we just call our standard deviation function. And uh, again, we have to do this kind of indexing with NumPy since it doesn't come with a rolling standard deviation function uh, built in. So our first data point would be uh, SPY uh, NumPy.std. Our data uh, data array is SPY PCT, and we go zero to twenty. So our first uh, non-zero numbers are six one three nine, and what do we get up here? We got huh six two nine nine. Something is different, and rather than dragging this out. Um, and I'll write this out a little bit more in the uh, when I upload this data frame to to GitHub. Um, but if you look at the formulas for standard deviations, um, um, after you do the summation terms, you'll see it divided by sometimes by n or sometimes by n minus one, and these are defaulting to different values of those. So pandas, I brought up the documentation already. Um, it's set here in this variable dd or this argument ddof, and you can see the default is one. Whereas in NumPy, here it is again, ddof, and it defaults to zero. So that's the source of the difference. So if I wanted to make these agree, and I'm going to use uh, one as my default, because uh, that's how I've seen it done most often. I haven't been able to convince myself one way or the other, which is more correct. I guess I'm leaning towards um, having it set to one. So if I come down here, um, come in here and say ddof is equal to one, that should make them the same number. So six two nine well nine if we round it up six two nine nine so they agree cool so now let's just switch over and just do the same thing in excel just for the uh, sake of completeness and to answer the actual question that was asked asked here okay so here we are in excel i pulled in the same data set uh, from spy and let me see if i can clean this up and make the font a tad bit bigger uh, just so it's easier to see on the vid video Okay, so I just used the zoom function uh, rather than change the font size, and I cleaned up. I don't know why, but this, uh, the fact that the dates weren't showing was annoying me. Anyways, let's come in here, and we need the percent change. So let's just create a column here. We'll call it PCT change. These are our daily returns. Um, so this is going to be equal to basically the, uh, the change from day to day expressed as a percent. So it's going to be Let's see, my adjusted close column here, minus this one. Uh, we're going to close that out, and we're going to divide it by our original value to get the uh, get it as a percentage. So there we are. Let's just make this column a little bit wider here. And we'll just drag this down to fill up these values here. Come on. So we are good to go. So let's come back up to the top here. And let's make our, uh, we'll call it hist vol, historical volatility. Okay, so now I'm just going to calculate the standard deviation. Now, again, you have to be careful that 
take care of that either the n, n in the denominator or n minus one. Um, <clears throat> the n is just called the population standard deviation, and the n minus one is typically referred to as the sample uh, standard deviation. So we need the sample standard deviation. Excel has both. So we're going to do uh, STDEV, and it's going to be dot S. And now we're just going to call, and remember we want 20, um, 20, uh, 20 data points. So we're starting here at our first one would be H3. So we're going to go H3, and we're going to go to H, uh, we want 20 points, so that's going to be H22 is going to be our last point. And that should be it. And let's just kind of pull this out here to get more digits. So as you see, we get the exact same number we got in Python. And to fill this out, we would just drag this um, down here. And be aware that um, uh, we need a lead, a lead of like 20 points for this. So you can't kind of go beyond the end of the data, uh, pull it down continuously here. I probably should have offset this rather than um, starting it at this value starting it down at uh, at um, this row index of 22 but oh well i did it like this um yeah this is all really simple so i'm not going to bother with any sort of outro um i will clean up the notebook and kind of write down some uh, additional notes that will refer to this spreadsheet i'll also put the spreadsheet up on um, github if you just want to look at it and play around with it cool so um until next time i will see you later